Yes, please. Okay, yep. So, dear esteemed judges, a very good morning or evening here from Singapore. Uh, I'm David, and together with Megan, Valerie, Elial, and Andrew, we are Team Oakwood Partners. And today we're going to advise Bank BRE, one of Indonesia's largest bank, on Kelapa Credit or Palm Oil Credit. So, our pitch in 30 seconds. As a bank, you must be aware that sustainable financing is the next big thing. Banks like us issue green bonds to companies and give them good terms as long as they meet their sustainability KPIs. The problem is sustainable financing so far are mostly exclusive for big companies. On the other hand, we have microfinancing, traditionally reserved for pure, poor communities, right, such as farmers, to escape poverty. Uh, however, the problem is such financing often does not include sustainability elements. Hence, we want to marry both concepts and create sustainable microfinancing to help smallholder farmers produce palm oil more sustainably. Now, why smallholder farmers? Well, let's dive deep into the problem. Firstly, it's staggering to note that out of the five provinces in Indonesia with the highest deforestation, three are from Kalimantan. New research have shown that smallholder farmers are, in fact, at the heart of this problem. While big companies are now able to use their resources to produce palm oil more sustainably, smallholder farmers often do not have the resources and know-how to produce palm oil sustainably. And this problem is significant considering that smallholders contribute 40% of Indonesia's palm oil produce. And the implication is a fear. If smallholders do not produce sustainably, that will compromise the sustainability measures of all the players downstream. And of course, players like Wilma and Unilever can always reject farmers who do not produce sustainably, but it's not that simple. They could always sell to the leakage market and to firms that basically do not care about sustainability. Hence, we believe that we should correct this problem at source. Now, to change farmers' behavior, we need to understand why they do what they do. Firstly, farmers are typically very concerned about money. They are already finding it very hard to make ends meet, often having to rely on loans to survive or expand their, their farming business. Thus, if there's no financial incentive to fix their behaviors, they won't change. Secondly, even if they want to change, they often lack the know-how and resource to change. Therefore, Bank BRE can take the lead to promote sustainable palm oil production to smallholders and the upstream businesses who directly rely on these farmers using sustainable microfinancing. So how can we do this? So we can do this through our solution, Kalapa Credit. So Kalapa Credit, or Palm Credit in Bahasa Indonesia, so this refers to sustainable microfinancing. It all starts on the left with smallholder farmers. So they require credit for equipment or expansion. BRI can then offer them loans packed to sustainably linked KPIs. Meeting these KPIs could then result in better terms for them. So for example, better interest rates or better loan durations. So this would result in what you see in the right, sustainable solutions, where smallholders are incentivized to use sustainable solutions to get these better terms. BRI is one of Indonesia's largest banks and more importantly, a dominant player in the microfinance space. The micro SME segment is the bank's primary driver of growth. And even during the COVID period, NPL has been staggeringly low at below 1%. BRI, the next slide, yes. Uh, BRI is no stranger to sustainable finance. And it is one of the pioneers in the country, actually, and it has won several awards in the space. In recent years, um, BRI has done a tremendous job of marrying microfinance and sustainable finance, offering small ticket size loans and increasingly shorter tenors. And with this credibility in the space, we believe that you have the credibility to engage other stakeholders in the industry. Next. In, no, in order to truly have that impact on emissions, it's very important to define the specific practices that constitute sustainable practices, otherwise they would just be buzzwords. On this slide, you can see some examples of these practices, and we want you to draw your attention on some of the possible KPIs that we can have, which we have adapted from the roundtable on sustainable palm oil, um, the RSPO, uh, and they have the independent smallholder standards, where, which we have taken this from. For example, smallholders will have to commit to no burning for preparing land, uh, pest control or open fire for waste management, 
and there must also be no physical evidence of any such activities after certain periods, such as one year, depending on the agreements, and there will be inspections for this, which we will elaborate in the next slide. Naturally, the next step is to ensure that as borrowers, smallholders will comply with the sustainable practices that they have agreed to adopt. And at the end of the day, we do want to try um, and see if you can facilitate knowledge transfers between the RSPO inspectors and the existing network of loan officers that is already spread across the country. And we also have existing data infrastructure from the debit cards that BRI already offers to farmers. And we do intend to leverage on that for our solution. Next slide. Yes, um, and you can think of Klapa Credit as a group-based sustainable microfinancing solution, which we have adapted from traditional group microfinancing structures with better credit performance due to social capital, positive impact on uh, successful entrepreneurship. And it is also uh, group-based microfinancing that uh, further improves desired outcomes. We want to improve knowledge sharing, as we have mentioned in the previous slides, while improving um, their performance with regards to the KPIs and also increased accountability. And we believe that it isn't sufficient to just implement Kalapa credits. In fact, we want, no, we need to empower our smallholder farmers with sustainable farming knowledge. And we already have access to the best partners for these, palm oil refinery companies. Together, BRI, our partners and smallholder farmers can benefit from Communitas Kalapas, which stands for Palm Community. With Communitas Kalapa, we envision the future of sustainable palm oil farming beginning with a partnership with BRI and eligible refineries to launch an accelerator program, an area which your bank is very familiar with, with your BR incub incubator. With this, your partners who are already experts on sustainable practices will transfer their knowledge to smallholder farmers that they already work so closely with. Following this, with the implementation of both our recommendations, farmers adopt sustainable practices, taking one step closer to our end goal of long-run sustainability. To take our first step, we must begin by picking the right partners. These must be palm oil refineries who are champions of sustainability and have access to the smallholder farmer community, such as the companies that we see here in this diagram. And BRI is actually already in a very good position to mobilize your partners with your existing customers, Pakabuna Nunsatura and Rajawali Group being strong candidates. Next, launching your accelerator. Given your rich experience in accelerator programs, your bank is well positioned to launch one aimed at creating sustainable palm oil practices among smallholder farmers to not only provide the finance that these people need, but also go one step further to empower them in the long run with the added benefits of gaining agricultural know-how and higher cultural yield. With Communitas Kalapa, everyone in the community wins. We believe that a keen understanding of the nuances of different local communities in Kalimantan are key to the widespread adoption of our proposed strategies. This is especially in the context of Indonesia, where different local sub-communities have their own unique cultures, and community leaders themselves wield significant influence over the population. As such, we propose fostering strong relationships with these community leaders as key marketing channels for our two-pronged strategy, alongside partnering with local on-the-ground NGOs to facilitate knowledge transfer. So let's talk impact. We believe that our recommendations will bring about favorable financial impacts for both BRI and the smallholder farmers that BRI will serve through our strategies. Our financial projections show that BRI's smallholder farmer borrowers will save 10.7% in cumulative interest expense, while BRI will enjoy a USD 1.5 million increase in loan quantum from smallholder farmers in FY21. So our two-prong strategy will be strategically rolled out in, two in a few phases. In the next slide. So by the end of 2021, we expect key KPIs, which you can see at the bottom of the slide, to be met. That of growing BRI's loan portfolio of smallholder farmer borrowers, increasing BRI's revenue, and shrinking the leakage market. We see these strategies in the next slide as being economically viable past the first year. While you can see that the triggering of these ratchets of these sustainability linked KPIs will result in reduced margins, we think that this will be mitigated in the long run. On the right, we see that competitive loan pricing will increase market share, offsetting this revenue decrease. Next, we have also identified various risks, which we believe to have low probability and low impact. We'll be happy to run through this in the Q&A segment later. So to conclude, we think that our sustainable microfinance strategies of Kalapa Credit and Communitas Kalapa 
will be able to address the key problems identified earlier and bring great value across the supply chain. With our solutions, you'll be able to create a more sustainable production and source for businesses along the palm oil value chain in Kalimantan and in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, team. Great job. So now we're going to open up to the judges for a five-minute Q&A session. Great. Well, I'm, I'm happy to start. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Oakwood Partners, um, for uh, a very interesting presentation. Um, I wanted to ask the first question. How would you know if the, the, the partners are meeting the sustainable KPIs? And if they're not meeting the, the, the sustainable KPIs, what are the consequences of not meeting the, the, the KPIs? Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Eric. So perhaps I will um, I will take that question. So I would like to bring the, your attention again to the way um this microfinancing work, where we set up the KPIs, right? And I think it it's the similar method works with uh like when we talk about green bonds, right? There will be some sort of penalties or the benefits that are promised are only given after let's say a certain time have lapsed. So for example. Uh, I think in large sustainable bonds, that means let's say after six months, your interest, interest rate will be reduced. So I think we can um, apply the similar model where there will be like some negative pull or maybe some positive push for them to um, uh, behave sustainably. So in the form of penalty and, and some temporal aspect to it. And I think uh, the way to ensure that they do it, um, I think we mentioned this earlier that your bank currently already has a vast network of loan officers. And when, when it comes to dealing with farmers, these loan officers already visit the farmers regularly to, to interact with them and collect loans. So why not, if we can do some knowledge transfer and equip our loan officers with the capability to do some checkings um, uh, with regards to the, sustainability, uh, the farmer sustainability practice, uh, we think that that's something that you can leverage on to help to audit the performance of the farmers. Okay. And then for the loan um, officers, right, that are imparting knowledge, I, I, I totally understand the concept, but, you know, at the same time, these are loan officers, right? I mean, trying to make them, you know, develop another type of expertise is, is, is difficult because at the end of the day, they're, they're, they work at a bank. How would you deal with, with, that, with that issue? Um, ultimately, it is a collaborative effort between the loan officers and the RSPO inspectors. So in this case, we are not really, um, we're not really changing the job scope of the loan officers. We are simply equipping them with more skills so that they do understand the sustainability audits and they can also help to better inform the, the, farm, um, the smallholder farmers as well. But we will not cut out the RSPO in inspectors out of the process, which is why this is also something that we will continuously review so that we know how much um, push and pull there is and we know how much, um, each, uh, how much each of them will have to take on in this collaboration. So that ultimately what they can do is that they can uh, work together to just um, ensure that the smallholder farmers know what to do to meet their KPIs. Also, not to forget that we we want we plan to engage local NGO partners who are knowledgeable yes. in this area as well in the in the initial rollout. So yeah, I'll I'll allow my other judges to have an opportunity <laughs> to ask some questions. Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, first, I wonder, have you looked at how this is going to affect women versus men? Uh, what percentage of smallholder farmers are women? What are their roles? And are, will the bank create a different criteria for women versus men, or is it exactly the same? That's the first question. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I think on that note, actually, interestingly, there has been a research by Singapore Institute of, um, I think, humanitarian studies that um, I think there are several pilots that has been done in Indonesia with regards to smallholder financing. And interestingly, they have shown that it benefits women farmers more than 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 men. Perhaps because um, the 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 gap the gap um, the gap is a little bit uh, there is a lot of opportunity to be done because in Indonesia where we think that uh, gender inequality is still a big issues and that comes mm -hmm. down to the to the rural areas but of course that is very contingent um, to um, how we select our KPIs as well right so if we are being very intentional in the way we select our KPI and the way we select who do we want to support with this program then definitely that's something that we can. Uh, we can we can mobilize in that sense in terms of 
you know. But that depends on how we select our KPIs as well. So yeah. So so how will you select your KPIs? Will you put in sort of a lens for sustainability, ethnicity, religion, gender? Are you going to put in those pieces or? Yeah. I think uh, one thing that uh, interestingly we can we can take note is that um, when partnering with some of these public companies, for example, uh, Wilma or Pekabunan Kelapa, in Indonesia currently uh, the government is pushing for greater sustainability, and yeah. these companies they have different alignments to what cause they want to support. So I think yes, if some companies like for example they they have a greater intention to support gender equality, then if they want to be our partners, then that's something that we can incorporate in terms of KPI as well. But I think that is also contingent on who, which partner are we eventually going to engage in that sense. So, so let me just make sure, so the KPI oh, time for contingent on partners, right? Uh, yeah, but definitely that's something that time we can drive. Over. Thank you. Okay, Thank time you. for questions is done. Sorry, we're on a tight schedule. So I'm gonna pass it over to <laughs> right, Mike, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no thanks, thanks so off. much. Thank you well, so much don't... everyone. I know Dan had one question, so we'll let Dan ask one last question, and then we will end this session. Yeah, maybe I struggle one. <laughs> I'll try to answer concisely. Uh, no, it's it's really just a comment. It looks like um, <clears throat> you got a great idea, but it's the question is is really about additionality. This looks like a, a design advance on BRE's existing existing business. So how much I mean, how much difference will it really make in terms of the you know, like if you tried to put in a KPI for greenhouse gas emissions or some other quantifiable environmental indicator, um, that's that's the question. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we're being a little bit creative here. So um, we definitely want to combine the idea of sustainability and microfinancing. I think that's something that we believe uh, to be something worth exploring for the bank, especially since we are the market leader in this area. So we have that yeah. leverage. Yeah. Yeah, hi. And so, hi, then just sorry to very quickly um, add on. Um, I think that you mentioned how, you know, it, our strategy is very similar to what the bank is currently offering, but we actually saw that as a strength because um, the timeline that we're given for this case is actually for it to be implemented within one year. So we felt that by really understanding the current capabilities of the bank and really adjusting and tweaking our strategy to tailor, tailor it to the, what the bank has to offer, we thought that that would be the most effective um, strategy. Awesome. Thank you, team. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up here. It's going to stop recording.